As Alan and Kathy come up, let me just say that as you hear their stories, you're going to see, come on up here, you guys. I know this is scary. <laughs> so let me just say, um, as you hear Alan and Kathy's stories, you're going to hear that they are here because God brought them here, because I believe in many ways you have prayed them here. About a year ago, we made a very intentional decision to begin praying that people who live in the Parker area, people who would fit so well at New Day, people who would just feel like when they come to New Day that they were coming home, but they weren't finding us, that we needed to start to pray those people here. And many of you have partnered to pray with us. Many of you are prayer partners, and you're praying for our community every day that those who would just come to know Christ here would be led here. And that's not everyone in our community, but it's some people in our community. And many of you have been praying that. And, and as you hear the stories, you're going to hear that Al and Kathy are here to a large degree because you prayed. And so thank you for praying. Um, and Al and Kathy, I would just say that everything you've just heard, everything we've done, all the hard work, everything we've done over the last 10 years is for you. That Jesus put us here just for you. And if, I mean, I'm serious. At 11, 12 years ago when he put this dream on our heart, God knew that this day was going to come and that you were going to need a church home. And so we're so glad you're here. And uh, we, we just want to hear your, a little bit of your testimonies and, and, and hear your story. And so Al, I, I believe you're going to share first. No, no Kathy's going to share first. That's right. She wants to get it over with. So. All right. Kathy, share it with us. I was raised in the Catholic Church, but stopped practicing once I was an adult. My husband, Al, was a Seventh-day Adventist when we met. But after we got married, we couldn't agree on the right church for our family. We told ourselves we could raise our family in a spiritual home without attending church. Al would recite stories in the Bible to our children, and on several occasions he would ask if I knew the story. Many times I would say no with embarrassment. I often thought to myself, did I not pay attention at all growing up? It was Al who finally understood that being raised Catholic, we didn't read the Bible. After almost 20 years of marriage, we hit some rough patches in our lives. And we both decided we really needed God. Unlike when we were first married, I told my husband, I will follow wherever you lead. The very first Saturday, we decided to attend church. We were both nervous and scared. Our daughters were also uncertain because they had never attended church before. On the way to New Day, Al said, I don't know if choosing the closest church is the best decision for us. He said, maybe we should have picked a church farther away because that would be more of a sacrifice. The moment we walked into New Day, we felt welcomed. The sermon that day was the start of the Together series. Pastor Dave spoke about how God never intended us to worship alone, but instead together. Each week, I have felt like the message of the, of the sermon has been meant for us. Al and I joined the Starting Point Bible Study, and I have a newfound love of the Bible and have enjoyed learning with a wonderful group of people. <clears throat> a few weeks ago, Al asked me, have you ever considered being baptized? I defensively responded that I had already been baptized. He, re he replied, I don't mean something your parents decided for you. Baptized because it's your choice. The next Sabbath, Pastor Dave said the exact words regarding baptism during his <laughs> sermon. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, I'm listening. I then humbly apologized to Al for being de defensive. The very next week, we were having a conversation before church regarding how to pray. I had previously asked Al, how do I pray? Growing up, I was taught to pray with recited prayers. Al explained to me that even the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. He explained that this is how the Lord's Prayer began. Then at service, Pastor Dave said the exact words what Al had told me about how to pray, the disciples and the Lord's Prayer. It was obvious that our reconnection with God was for a reason. Everything we had been talking about and learning was leading us in the direction of his open arms. There was no doubt God led us to New Day. I have always been a believer of Christ, but I am now a passionate Christ follower. Amen. <laughs> That's awesome. So, good morning, everyone. 
I, I always think um, the biggest mistake my wife made was marrying a Seventh-day Adventist without interviewing him first. <laughs> I think she should have been a little bit suspicious of a guy who had more books than clothes. <laughs> but we, um, like, as she said, we got married, religious views set aside because we were so, you know, smitten with each other. I was willing to set aside my books in the crawl space, never to be seen, never discuss um, our differences as far as religion. We just sort of, for 20 years, just hid the fact that we were different. And um, it started surfacing. Our differences started manifesting itself. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Our differences started manifesting itself in ways that were destructive. Um, sorry. I'd say really hurtful things to her. Because I resented her um, for, I felt, you know, the choices I made. And, um, you know, finally, like Jonah, I said, maybe if I throw myself overboard, there'll be peace in the home. So I wanted to move out. And um, I gathered all my books that I had resented over 20 years and put them in a dumpster, a really big dumpster. Seriously, these books cost thousands of dollars. People give them to me over the years as gifts because they thought I was, they, th they saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. So all the books on, um, you know the books, does hardbound books that cost a lot. People give them the sets of books to me every single time as gifts. They said, we think you deserve to have these. And I didn't appreciate them. So I threw them in the dumpster. And um, I sat in the garage and I thought about it. And I went and fished them back out. <laughs> and threw them back in again. And just sort of, I'm, and I moved out. And for about a month, we were apart, we never spoke to each other, but I was struggling so hard. And, um, you know, I think I must have offended God really badly, throwing those books away. Because I didn't have, I gave my two daughters my Bibles. I, as I was leaving, I told my two daughters to have, and these Bibles have all kinds of things under, underlined in them. If, <laughs> but I was really struggling. And I think God was so displeased with me. I was having all kinds of um, thoughts. And I didn't have a Bible, so I went to the internet on my phone because I didn't have Wi-Fi where, where I moved. And I found something that really troubled me. Um, not troubled me in a bad way. It troubled me in a good way. Because the questions I was asking I found a book written by Mark Betcher, and I read it. The title of the book is, Who Will Sing the Song? Who Will Sing the Song? If you have a chance, look it up. And, um, and I, it was so in line with what I was feeling and thinking that I thought, who is this guy, this Mark Betcher guy? And I Googled his name. He turns out he's a Seventh-day Adventist pastor and in California. So I decided, you know what, God, I'm listening. And over the course of the weeks, I'd ask for things. Show me a sign, kind of like Gideon. And when, when, I, when God showed me something, I said, no, give me, show me the opposite, kind of the way Gideon did. I don't think you're really talking to me. And so some of the things that Kathy's telling you, those are sort of, I think, in a way, God's saying to me, you know, kid, you can't wrestle with me and win. Hmm. You need to just surrender. Um, find your place back where I want you to be. Hmm. And bring your family with you. Amen. So, I said to you, thank you for keeping the lights on for 10 years. 
thank you for paying the bills. Thank you for not being selfish and stingy. And um, like Kathy said, the message, the together message was touching to me and it, it sort of applied to our situation. And I told her just a couple of days ago, yesterday I believe, I felt like that message had a broader um, application. Because what I saw here was so unique, the way you and Pepsi are working together, the way I, I just felt like that was something pretty special. And, and then the next week or so, the pastor from Pepsi came over and I told Kathy, she said, Al, don't you think they know this? And I said, I don't know if they do, if they're paying attention to what's happening. Maybe I'm just an observer. But he came over and he said, we're in Africa and we're working with churches together. And he kept saying together. The same message almost, just broader application of what it means for, for people to cooperate and, 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 and do God's work. That's, I, I felt comfortable here. I felt like you were doing something interesting. And if God so blesses me, I would love to be part of what you're doing. Thank you, Al. That's good. Well, the two of you want to make a commitment to Christ today through baptism, this 2,000-year-old ceremony. And I just have some questions to ask you. Do you believe that the Bible shows us how to live and love and how to relate to God? Do you desire to make Jesus the king of your lives? Do you accept what Jesus has done to save you? Do you accept his power to continually change you? Do you covenant to spend time with him regularly uh, through prayer and Bible study? Do you co commit yourself to this body of believers, to being served by and to serving others? And do you desire to be a part of this church, New Day, as well as the worldwide Seventh-day Adventist movement? All right. If you are willing to accept Al and Kathy into fellowship, could you just signify in some way? All right. That works. Al, I think you're first. Al, because of your love for Jesus and your desire to be a part of his kingdom in this church, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Kathy, because of your love for Jesus and your desire to be a part of his kingdom and of this church, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. But well, we believe that the Bible teaches us that when someone is baptized, the, the, the apostles and the leaders of the church would gather around those people and place hands on them as a sign of conference of authority and reception of the Holy Spirit. And so at New Day, we keep that 2,000-year-old tradition alive. And so we're going to just come down here. We're going to lay hands on them. And if you're a leader of this church, you'd like to come forward. Or if you'd just like to come forward and show your support of Alan Kathy, we're going to surround them now and just pray over them.
maybe there's a few people who'd like to volunteer. Go ahead, Mike. If anyone else wants to pray after, Mike, go ahead. Lord, we just together, uh, as we surround them in love and lay hands on them, we pray that your spirit fill Al and Kathy. Fill them with authority in Jesus' name. Fill them with all the gifts that they will need to fulfill your purpose in their lives, to build up their family in Jesus' name, to build up this church in Jesus' name, and to be salt and light in the places you have placed them in this community. Lord, we pray a light would shine out of them, that a spiritual strength would rest on them, God. We pray that their marriage would be an example to other marriages. We pray that their family would be strong in you, God. We lift up their kids, and we thank you that they're here today to witness their baptism and pray that you bless them as well. And Father, as we just uh, welcome Alan Kathy into our family, we just pray, Father, that they would uh, find their place and grow and thrive as passionate followers of Jesus here at New Day. And we ask it in his name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.